Hey, PAG Pastor Don, it's Wednesday night. You know what that means. It's time for digital discipleship. So grab your Bible, grab a highlighter, a pen, a pencil, your journal, and let's dive into the Word of God tonight. I'm so excited because tonight is the week that I've been talking to you about for the last couple of months. Tonight, we launch into our brand new series called The Cycle Breaker, Breaking Generational Curses and Destructive Patterns Off of Our Life. It's based on this book by Francis Frangipane. So if you're in the Pawnee area and you don't have a copy of this, uh, call us here at the office and we will tell you how you can get a copy of this book. It's a book that changed my life. Um, we're going to be looking at a topic over the next 10 weeks of deliverance. Can I tell you, it's not as it always is portrayed in the movies, right? Heads spinning and people throwing up. That's 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 Hollywood, right? Like, uh I want to talk to you about the simplicity of what deliverance means. Deliverance simply means this, breaking the chains off your life so that you can be free. That's what it is. And so I'm going to walk you through what that looks like in the life of a believer over the next 10 weeks. We're going to use a lot of scripture. We're going to get into... Uh, the original language that the Bible was written in. So we understand in context with content of exactly what the writers of the Bible were talking about when they address certain issues and whenever they spoke on certain topics so that we're keeping it in context. And can I just share with you, if this video blesses you or any of the videos over the next 10 weeks, could you do me two favors? Number one, could you share it with a friend? Number two, if it really blesses you, could you, uh, at the very end of the video, Miss Ashley, she will jump on here. Uh, she's our church secretary. And she will uh, give you a link to a Zoom class, which uh, pops on immediately after this video is done airing on Wednesday nights. And you can join us no matter where you're from. You can join us in that Zoom class to go even deeper into the topic that we're discussing each week on the video. And uh, we have a little more time. It's a little more interactive. If you have questions, I can uh, interact with you a little bit more on that, that Zoom class. And it's open to all. And uh, we just invite you in. And our heart is simply this, that you would walk in the freedom that Christ paid for you to walk in, right? Just because he paid for your freedom, right, to set you free, we can choose to live and walk in bondage. Uh, we can choose that out of ignorance, or we can choose that out of laziness and just not doing what we know we ought to do, right? And so there's many ways where we can invite bondage back in our life. But the Bible says, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. That means he's done everything he needed to do that you and I could walk in the freedom that he came to the earth and died for us to have. And so over the next couple of weeks, we are going to do three things, okay? We're going to... Uh, Identify what a destructive cycle is in our life or a generational curse. We're going we're gonna to understand how to identify those things in our lives. We're going to learn uh, how to break those. And then we're going to learn how to walk in victory, right? Anytime you break something off your life, you want to replace that with something that is of the kingdom of light. And uh, that's biblical. And so we're going to do that over the next few weeks. It's going to be incredible, this class. Our uh, series is going to run 10 weeks, and I would just invite you, encourage you, uh, implore to you uh, to take th at least 30 minutes over the next 10 weeks every Wednesday night from 6 to 6.30, and I would encourage you to jump in the Zoom class uh, from 6.30 to 7.30, but definitely from 6 to 6.30 and watch these videos. Do not miss uh, one lesson in this series because I believe this is a word that is for such a time as this. This isn't something that's a trendy topic that everybody's talking about. This is revelation that God placed in my heart, and he's grown over the last 10 years, um, and I believe it was for this moment. How many of you know our world is in chaos? We're living literally on a battlefield, right? And there's lines being, being drawn uh, to pull us in on a side, and they're saying, you better pick a side, right? And uh, it's with everything. Listen, are you uh, in this crowd or are you of this crowd or is your opinion of this or do you support this? And it's all pulling us into issues that are not, listen, the main issue. 
The main issue that we have to look at as believers is the kingdom issues, right? And so we can get caught on surface level of stuff and we can uh, go and look at the fruits of the knowledge of good and evil, or we can look at the seed and where that thing comes from, right? And I don't know about you, but as for me, I don't want to be caught messing with the knowledge of good and evil, right? I want to eat from the tree of life, right? And that's what the Bible uh, is is for. It's, it's to teach us to have eyes of the Spirit, to have ears of the Spirit, to see the things that the world around us is missing, to hear the things that the world around us is missing. We're going to learn how to do that over the next 10 weeks. And so let me talk to you really quick about what it will take to break generational curses and uh, and uh, cycles out of our lives that are not godly, right? Like cycles that come from the kingdom of darkness. Like I said, we have been caught in a war between the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. There is a fight going on for your eternity this very moment. Now, God has done everything uh, he has needed to do, Jesus has, on his side in the kingdom of light to purchase you and give you victory. But Satan is going to do everything he can to deceive as many people as he can to uh, take them into an eternity of hell. Can I tell you tonight, Jesus is real, Satan's real, heaven's real, hell's real, and there is a battle going on for you in this very moment in your family, in your children, in your marriage. And so you have to know how to fight. And so uh, to be free, you must know this. It will take work. It will take work for you to stay free. The kingdom of heaven is never rewarded to lazy people. Laziness never leads to godliness. To be free and stay free, you have to know that generational curses and uh, cycles are only broken one way. One way, my friend. And it's this simple. The Bible says there's only one way to heaven. <clears throat> and that way is through Jesus. There's only one way to freedom. And that way, my friend, is through the blood of Jesus. It's the only way you stay free. It's through the word of God. It's through knowing and understanding and how to equip yourself with the word of God. And to be free and stay free, you have to know this. At times in life, it will be uncomfortable and even painful. You have to know this. Where you allow excuses, you refuse freedom. Any excuse you allow in your life, you're telling the enemy he has the right to stay there and control that area of your life. And so we're going to do our best to eliminate excuses over the next 10 weeks. We need to know that it not only costs Jesus something, but it will cost you something to stay free. What will it cost you? It'll cost you time, right? You're going to have to get into the Word of God. It's going to cost you the ability to, to exercise and use the Word of God, right? And so you need to know this over the next 10 weeks. To be free and stay free, God will not function in our chaos, right? He doesn't come and bring freedom to chaos uh, in, in the way of just allowing the chaos to continue. When God steps in the picture to set us free, he puts chaotic things into order because he's not the author of confusion. That's the enemy. And if we're allowing confusion and chaos in our life, we're inviting the enemy to function in our life. And that's not how God designed us to live. Uh, and so we need to know that everything in our life is not a demon, right? Some things in life are just life. Some things are uh, cycles, however. And some things, those sometimes those cycles turn into generational curses, right? Because we allow that cycle to continue. Our job, break the cycle, break the pattern, break the curse, live free. And so we're going to discuss uh, what is a stronghold. A stronghold is an entrenched, deceptive thought. It is a way of living uh, that creates a fortress in our lives and our minds. It is an enemy, uh, an enemy as uh, outpost uh, where Satan has dominion rather than God in our life. It is something that's fortified that we invite and allow. And can I tell you, it's built one brick at a time. And so when it's torn down, it's torn down a piece at a time, right? That's how it works. And so 
every cycle begins with a stronghold. And so we are going to look at these tools that will break uh, the cycles and strongholds out of our lives. Number one, we're going to look at deliverance. Uh, we are going to look at the power to encounter and cut out the roots. Number two, we're going to look at the power of repentance and prayer. The Bible says over and over and over, in fact, when Jesus first steps on the scene, the very first thing he says is repent, right? Repent means change the way you think, followed by change the way you act. That's not just an emotional thing of crying and, and snotting all over a church altar, right? Repentance means you got to change the way you think. Romans 12, 1 and 2, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. you got to change the way that you think. Hosea 4, 6, we're destroyed for lack of knowledge, right? We're thinking wrong. And so we got to change our stinking thinking, uh, as Joyce Meyer would say. And so I'll throw a couple scriptures out for you. Uh, Mark 9, 29 says this. So he said to them, this kind can only come out by prayer, right? We said prayer and repentance, prayer and fasting, right? He was telling them, you got to change the way you look at this. If you want to be delivered or you want to deliver others, you can, first of all, you can't deliver somebody from something you don't know how to deliver yourself from, right? It's like uh, going to the person who doesn't know how to handle money and allowing them to be your accountant. Dumb decision, right? You want to be free so that you can set other people free. How does that happen? That happens, Mark uh, 9, 29. He's telling the disciples. This comes out by prayer and fasting. He's saying it's not just laying your hands on. Sometimes that works, but he's saying in this specific instance in Mark 9, 29, it doesn't work that way. You got you to gotta look at this differently. Uh, we also see this in 1 John 1, 8 and 9. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sins and cleanse us from unrighteousness. And we learn in Matthew 6, 33, our goal is to stay in righteousness with Jesus. Why? Because power comes through relationship, righteousness, legal, uh, being legal in the kingdom. And so uh, unrighteousness, being illegal in the kingdom comes whenever we have sin in our life. And the problem in America, listen, is not all the issues that everybody's attacking and addressing. Can I just tell you that? The problem is sin, my friend. That's the problem. And so number one is deliverance. Number two is repentance and prayer. And number three is the Bible. These are the ways you break cycles, right? And you can look at Romans 12, 1 and 2, which we talked about. If you use those three, uh, uh, four things in your life, if you use... Uh, uh, deliverance, prayer and repentance, and the Bible, it equals this, freedom, freedom. If you apply those four areas, it equals freedom. So I want to talk to you real quick about why this is important to you, why I believe you sh every believer that's listening to me tonight, you should tune in over the next 10 weeks, okay? Because this, the Bible says in Ephesians, we wrestle not with flesh and blood. We're going to take that scripture actually in the Zoom class tonight, which follows this video. And I'm going to break every single one of those words pretty, pretty much into the original language, right? And it's not going to be boring. It's going to blow your mind, I promise you. And I'm going to show you why that scripture, Ephesians 6, 10 through 12, is so essentially important to you, okay? But I'm going to show you really quick. I'm going to go back and I'm going to show you in Mark chapter 9, or Mark chapter 4, I'm sorry, verse 35 through 39, how this applies to your life, right? We wrestle not with flesh and blood. Often what we do is this. We attack the wrong thing. We, we spend our energy, our time, focused on the wrong thing. And we complain to God then because we do not get the result that we want to get. But the reason we don't get the result is because our time, energy, and focus is on the wrong thing. It's not even on the enemy. It's on the issue. And so what we want, right, right, what they want you to do is get caught in the issue. What the enemy loves is to get you and I fighting over issues and missing the enemy. Watch this. Romans 4 Verse 35 through 39, you know, this is where Jesus, he speaks to the wind and the waves, right? Give you the backdrop. So Jesus is in the boat with the disciples. They set out um, on the sea and this tempest or this storm arises. And it. the Bible tells us it comes out of nowhere. 
Friend, if you have not had a storm come into your life out of nowhere, I promise you, listening to the sound of my voice, it will happen. It happens where the enemy comes out of nowhere. And you have to recognize the enemy for who he is. And you have to fight the enemy, not the issue. And so we see this here. Romans 4, 35 through 39. On the same day, when evening had come, the Bible says, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Verse 36. Now, when they had left the multitude... They took him along in the boat uh, as he was, as he was, and, uh, and other little boats uh, were with them also. Verse 37, and a great windstorm, the Bible says, arose and the waves beat into the boat and it was already filling with water. And so, right, so they're scooping water and they're trying to get water out of the boat. But he was in the stern asleep on a pillow. He, meaning Jesus. And they awoke him and they said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? You ever had that talk with God? God, do you not even care? Do you not know where I'm at? Do you not see me? Right? You're not the only one. Uh, verse 39, and he arose and he rebuked. I love this, right? They're focused on the waves, remember, right? They're trying to get the water out of the boat. Their focus is on what they can see. But the problem is not the waves. The problem is the wind that's causing the waves, the wind that they cannot see, but it's something that they definitely feel, and they wake him up. And before he ever speaks to the waves, he addresses the problem, which is the wind. He doesn't address the issue. He addresses the enemy, right? And so he rebuked the wind and said, peace, be still. I love this. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. But he said to them, why were you so fear fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, who is this that even the wind and the sea would obey him? Now listen, my friend. We do this all the time, wrapping up and closing. We say, God, I don't have enough money. Money's not the issue. God, my marriage is in trouble. Your marriage, my friend, is not the issue. God, my kids are going crazy. Your kids are not the issue. God, my job or those people on my job, that is not the, the issue, right? Can I tell you this? Those are all issues, but they're not the enemy. Remember what I said, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 12, we wrestle not with flesh and blood. If the enemy can get you always focused on the issue, you will always miss the enemy. You'll address the waves failing to see the wind. See, often what happens is this. We get a windstorm in our life, in our marriage, with our kids, on our job, and we feel, we feel the wind, but we address the waves. You'll never have victory just addressing the waves. So my heart is this. My heart is that you would stay on here, and I'm going to dive in really deep on how we address the enemy and not just the issue. We're going to dive into Ephesians chapter 4, verse 10 through 12, in a really deep way that's practical, and you're going to learn how to live in victory. But let me pray with you. If you can join us, join us in our Zoom class following this. Miss Ashley will give you the link. If you can't join us, I love you. I pray for you. And I'm going to speak victory into your life uh, and continue to join us over the next 10 weeks. Well, I love you, Lord. I just pray over your body, over your people. Thank you for allowing them to spend some time with me tonight and us to spend some time into your word. God, I pray this week, open our eyes that we would see what you see and we would hear what you hear. God, that we would not spend all of our time and energy and focus chasing the waves, God, but Lord, we would be intent on chasing the enemy, God, the true enemy, and we would rebuke the wind. God, I thank you so much that you have purchased our freedom and victory. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Well, hey, if you want to go deeper into this subject, 
feel free to stay on here. And Miss Ashley will give you the link to jump into our Zoom class and invite a friend in Jesus' name. I love you. May his kingdom culture be built in your life this week. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us tonight for Digital Discipleship with Pastor Don. To learn more about living and walking in spiritual freedom, join us tonight at 6.30 p.m. for our Zoom Discipleship class. Pastor Don will continue to teach us how to be cycle breakers while going through the book, The Three Battlegrounds. To join our Zoom discipleship class, use the meeting ID 867-0038-9688. Again, we can't wait to see you tonight inside our Zoom discipleship class.